Hi guys, welcome to the next International Scrapbooking Day Challenge. This time our challenge is to find one of our first layouts that we did. This is one that I did back in 2009 and scrap lift it. And I have actually wanted to try this for a while and so this challenge gives me the kick in the pants that I needed to give this another try. So I'm going to scrap lift this. Uh, I have two Instagram pictures, so they're going to go here and here. Instead of three photos, it will be two photos. And I'm going to copy the circle uh, background as part of the background paper and then putting embellishments all the way around it and putting the title here on the curve as well. Those are all aspects of this layout that I'm going to scrap lift. I'm also going to uh, see if I want to scallop the circle or I might not do that it kind of depends if I do scallop it I will be using a pinked circle instead of a scalloped circle to do that and look it looks like I forgot one there did I forget one or did it fall out it looks like I forgot it anyhow um, I will be copying this but updating it with my own style because my style has changed since I made this layout and so uh, so yeah that's that's it Here's the close-up of this layout. There were rub-ons over here. I did messy stitching all the way around. That's the only kind of stitching I did back then. And these were, I think these were Glitz Designs letter stickers. I love all these buttons. And this was a Scarlet Lime stamp. And I layered these flowers. I think this was one sticker that I used and then another one. And then I just put these little stickers in, be in behind. So this is not a cluster that I made. This is a cluster that came that way. So I'm going to give this a go using this kit that I picked out uh, from my stash to use specifically for today. So uh, let's see how this one turns out. So I'm going to start by just having a look through the kit that I have selected. This is again a kit from my stash and I was trying to decide if this Amy Tangerine floral pattern that I picked out for my kit if that would be big enough to make the circle that I want for the back uh, of the design and I've I've decided already that I do want the main circle of this layout to be the same size as the circle that was on the original layout. The only problem of course is that this paper is the paper that I want to use for that circle but it's already been cut into for a previous layout that I did. So I'm going to try making it smaller and just see, I mean, I'm making it as big as I can with the piece of paper that I have, and then we'll see if it is uh, usable or not, like if it fits with the vision that I have. I really want to stay as close to the original as possible. And so see, that's really not going to quite be the same, especially once you put two Instagram pictures on there. So you'll notice that I have that yellow uh, lemon paper in the background, kind of off to the side. So I'm going to try to use this as my background paper instead, for the circle I mean. And so uh, I'm using the outside of my Cutter B Circle Cutter. And I love this tool. I've had it forever and it works really well and I just really enjoy it. It works like I said, it's very smooth and as long as you use it with a glass cutting mat, it works really, really well. I know that it can be skippy if you use it, meaning like it skips and jumps and doesn't cut a very good circle if you use it on a non-glass mat, but using it on a glass mat, it works fine. So you see I have those two circles there and I'm just going to put away my circle cutter. So I have two options or I could put them together which is what I'm probably going to do. So this is a couple of weeks ago, maybe four or five, six weeks ago, I uh, did some mixed media with a whole bunch of background papers all in one day. So this is a stencil that I have and I'm just using some plain white gesso and I'm gessoing the whole entire paper first. I was going to put the dots on, um, but I decided to uh, gesso the whole paper and now I'm gonna put the dots on. And I'm putting the gesso on really thick so I put my thin coat I put a thin coat on the background just to get the whole the whole page covered in gesso and now I am putting on a very thick coat uh, over that stencil so that I have the little dimension of those circles showing and so that was several weeks ago this is long since dried and I keep all of my mixed media backgrounds under a large tray in my scrapbooking room so that it keeps them nice and flat 
So there are my photos again, and I'm going to trim them down, I believe. Yep, there's my little Creative Memories trimmer, which I like to use for my photos or for any project life-sized uh, trimming needs that I might have. So I'm just going to trim those down. And these photos are about a year old. They might be a little bit more than a year old. Uh, but I really liked the colors in them and I never did scrap them back when I took them. So I decided to kind of go back and scrapbook these. I mostly scrapbook recent recent photos, but every once in a while I'll do an older photo. So I've decided to layer these two patterned papers together. Even though, you know, I don't love the look of them together uh, on their own. I think once I cover enough of them up and, and they will they will look good better together once there's more stuff on the page along with them. Um, I'm just uh, talking there, I'm just showing you how I positioned the photos such that I could trim them down so that the photos will become part of the circle. And I don't think that, yeah, I did. I did do that with the original layout. So I, that's another thing that I'm, I guess I'm copying. And I just wanted to, you know, position that so that it was centered on the background paper. Um, and now this is my notes that I'm keeping for National Scrapbooking Day. And I'm just keeping a little tally of all the 27 items. So the larger challenge of the day is to use 27 specific items uh, on all of your layouts for the National Scrapbooking Day challenges. And so um, I wanted to check off mixed media because or texture paste, even though I'm not entirely, I guess gesso is not texture paste. I put something with texture on my background and I'm not eligible to win any of the challenges anyway so I'm being a little lax with myself and allowing myself to um, say that I met that part of the challenge even though it wasn't specifically texture paste I don't think I have any texture paste left so anyhow um, I, this is just my regular bottle of water. I put some pattern paper around my bottle of water. I love to keep an apple juice bottle in my scrap room because it's so bottom heavy uh, once it's filled with water that it's not very easily tippable. So of all the, I used to keep a regular water bottle just with water that you would drink and I found it, it tipped a lot and I have cats in and out of my room and children in and out of my room and I'm pretty clumsy myself. So I decided to keep this, it's a one liter, uh, apple juice bottle and I love it it's perfect for keeping water in my scrap room so this is the Tim Holtz yellow uh, distress crayon and I just put a little bit of it on my mat. Uh, basically, I have a set of watercolor paints, but I don't love them. So I've been using my Tim Holtz crayons as paints. And so I just put a little bit of pigment on my on my mat and then I uh, just add some water and it becomes a little, a little pool of watercolor paint and it works perfectly for my purposes. I know that you can do so much more with those crayons um, and I have, I have played around with them, but I love that, that those crayons can double can do double duty and also be my watercolor paints because my watercolor paints are just too I don't know the pigment in them is not that great I can't get the bold colors that I look for so I you saw me I just traced the outline of my circle design in very light pencil and then I I made a yellow uh, mark with the yellow watercolor I'm, I'm using air quotes when I say paint because it's the water it's the distress crayons and now I have my Hottie Swap Color Shine in the color Citron, which is, oh, I love that color. It's my very favorite Hottie Swap color, although it's not very usable. It's, it's you know, a very, very, very bright green. So I thought that it would look great with the colors that I plan to use on this layout. So I just, you saw me, I just used the, um, the, the spray nozzle to drag bits of the color all the way around so that I had these thin lines of of green going around and on top of the uh, painted yellow I guess background and then I added more pigment and more water in the yellow and uh, sprinkled some with my paintbrush I just picked it up and then I flicked my paintbrush to get those splatters in two of the corners actually in three of the corners. Uh, oh, no, in all four of the corners. Then I took my Mr. Huey's silver, uh, it, because that gives me a nice gray ink. And I, um, and I, I kind of drizzled the 
mist in another circular line around the edges of that as well just to give a little bit more contrast and interest not much of what I just did is going to show on my layout but uh, enough of it is going to show that it'll just have like this nice little detail of of mixed media now I'm just going over to my sewing machine to do some stitching and you might have seen while I was talking I had two different colors of green thread. One was quite neon and I didn't want to use the really really bright one so I used the um, other the other green thread which is which is actually also quite bright if you didn't compare it to the neon it would be considered a fairly bright green for thread and so the my bobbin is almost always either white or black in this case my bobbin is white and I'm just stitching all the way around the perimeter of each of those circles and I actually double stitched so so that means I, I went around the perimeter of the yellow paper with the lemons on it twice I did it I did both of them first because I wasn't sure if I was going to run out of bobbin and I really did not want to rethread my bobbin so I thought if I run out of bobbin I'll just do it once but if I have enough bobbin I'll do it twice. <laughs> That's uh, sometimes I make decisions based on my laziness not on design. <laughs> That's actually often the case. Anyhow that's what it looks like. I really like how that green thread looks. I think it's so pretty. I love, I, I, I don't have too many colored threads, but I, I like to have colored threads in the colors that I use the most. So I have a couple of bright greens, I have some pinks, and I have some teals and turquoises, and they're just so pretty. And of course, gold and, and silver. So I like how that background is looking, especially once you lay the circular part of the layout on top of it. And so now I have to think about what else I'm going to use on this. And so I'm pretty sure, well, you know, the original layout had all of those scallops all the way around it. They were scalloped circles that also formed a, a scallop uh, around the outside of it. And I thought I, I, I'd like to, to do that. I'd like to recreate that just kind of, it's not something that I would do today. And so I thought that's one of the greatest things about uh, scrap lifting an older layout and, and kind of using this as a challenge is to give yourself an opportunity to not only copy the design that you, that you used back then, but to also maybe mix up your current um, scrappy ways with a with a couple of older techniques that you haven't used very, very often. So I have, I used to, when I first started scrapbooking, I used to scallop a whole bunch of things by adding these little half circles to the edges of them. And since then I got some border punches and I've been not so much into that kind of a look. So I thought I would try to um, incorporate some of that into, into this layout. And I really like how it looks. I switched it up a bit by using vellum instead of cardstock. And I also, and it's a beautiful printed vellum, by the way. It's that um, Stampin' Up! vellum. I shared it in a haul maybe two or three months ago. And uh, it was my freebie with the Sailor Celebration. What's that called? The Celebration? Yeah, I think that's what they call it. Um, the promotion that they have every spring. And uh, that's it right there. And so I ran out, so I needed to punch some more. And that's my Martha Stewart punch all over the page or punch anywhere on the page. Um, it's a pinked circle and it's one of my favorite shapes. The, a pink circle is such a nice neutral usable shape. You can use it for almost anything. So I'm, I'm using that pink shape instead of the scalloped shape, the, like the pink circle instead of the scalloped circle to make my scallops on the larger circle. <laughs> just in case that's not confusing enough. Um, yeah, and I, I really like how it looks. And you'll notice that every once in a while, I am kind of turning it over and flipping up the scallops just to give them a bit of lift. And that just adds interest and uh, emphasizes the fact that those scallops are there. So I worked backwards at the end. I kind of went from one end to the other to the other kind of back and forth uh, so that I didn't end up so that I would end up with the right shape in the middle. Like I didn't want to have less than a half circle left at the end or I'd have a gap in my scallops. So I overlapped them in such a way that it would fit all nice and neatly. 
So I'm just using my ATG to finally attach this circle onto my background paper. And it's very messy and I kind of like how the background paper is messy and the um, the 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 layers, the, like the circular piece itself, is very neat and tidy. I, I kind of like that contrast. And of course, it's the the pictures are about painting out on the on the front step of our of our. Um, we've got kind of like a, a large porch that runs the length of our house, and so um, I I really wanted to be messy and have some mixed media on this one because it's all about painting, and I, we sent them outside for uh, painting so that they didn't make a mess inside, and also just because it was a beautiful beautiful day. Um, so these are Amy Tangerine Journal Thickers, and I love the color. It's like a beautiful grass green, and I think it complements beautifully the citrusy colors that are elsewhere in this layout. It's not a citrus itself, but it, it just complements the, the citrus colors quite nicely. And so just like in the original layout, I'm curving my title and I'm putting it over here up in the top left hand corner of my layout. And I have these, these are from, from these are Finley from the Glitz Designs uh, collection called Finley. Um, and, and the letter stickers are just beautiful and so are the phrase stickers. And I ended up not using any of the phrases on this particular layout, but I had them, they were part of my kit. So I was going to call this just front porch, but then I decided to add the word painting and then the words on the. So on and the are spelled out with the black tile letter stickers that came in the Finley collection. And then I'm just adding the word painting here. I almost forgot the I. There we go. That gives my title a little bit more oomph, like it's bigger, it takes up more space and also more weight because it's just that dark color compared to the other greens on the layout. It's actually the, the very similar green color to the leaves on the, on the lemons on the pattern paper from uh, Studio Calico. So the lemons, the lemon pattern paper is from Studio Calico. It's from their Lemon Lush collection. And I only got a couple of pieces of that Lemon Lush collection, but they were the jumping off point for choosing this kit. This is a kit that I picked from my stash uh, because I'm trying to use up some of the pattern papers that have been in my stash uh, for for over a year. Most of the papers I'm using here have been in my stash for a long time and I want to get them used up because I do really love them. So the floral paper I think I already mentioned is from the Amy Tangerine Yes Please collection and then again that lemon paper is from Lemon Lush from Studio Calico. So I'm just placing these letters so that they are very slightly overlapping the Lemon Lush pattern paper. And I just positioned them so that they didn't hang over the edge of the 12 by 12 background paper. And there we go. We're looking pretty similar so far. And I have some of those vellum scallops left over and I'm thinking about maybe using them on the layout, but I'm not entirely sure how to do that. So I'm just going to hold off on that idea for now. And I'm also thinking about using some of these word stickers and I was going to pick off a variety of them and put them on a piece of waxed paper. And, and I actually changed my mind about that and thought, I'm just going to keep this whole sheet off in the wings of what I'm doing, kind of like off to the side so that I can refer to it and maybe use them or maybe not use them. Now these, uh, those circular stickers that are made out of chipboard are um, from Studio Calico. I'm going to use those. And you just see me pulling a bunch of stuff in. These were all items that I included in my stash kit for National Scrapbooking Day. So there's some Maggie Holmes stuff. There's some Amy Tangerine stuff. It's all fairly old stuff. And I picked things that had the bright yellows and greens in them. And, and then of course, bright yellows and greens, I have to pull out my Mimosa embellishment kits because I have two of those, one from the fall of 2015 and one from the winter of 2016. So I'm going to pull those out and, and look at that doily. It looks so cute there. I had to put that down. 
and those yellow resin flowers are going to make it onto this layout as well but I'm not going to overdo it I don't want to put too much uh, embellishment on this page I want it to be mostly little round things going all the way around because in the original layout it was mostly all buttons going all the way around so I'm starting to take these are those Studio Caligo chipboard uh, stickers it, Stephanie Hart gave me these I think they came in a Studio Caligo kit so they might be exclusive to a kit I'm not sure if you can buy them and I'm just uh, taking I, the way that I'm choosing is is I've got three clusters going on one is a slightly out of frame so I'm not sure if you can so you can't really see it but there you go um, so I spread each of the three resin yellow flowers I spread into across around the circle and now each of those flowers becomes an anchor point for a cluster and so I've got uh, in each cluster I have a selection of these chipboard stickers and I'm trying to make sure that there's a yellow in each cluster, a green in each cluster, a pink in each cluster, and a gray in each cluster, and then a few more. And that uh, peacock feather is one of the die cut pieces from a Maggie Holmes collection. And it's, I, I think it looks perfect. It's going to be a nice place to anchor something. And we'll see what that might be. So now I'm go. I went into my stash. I didn't have all of these things in my in my kit, uh, but I wanted to draw some more things into into this layout. And I wanted to kind of mix it up with colors a little bit, so that it wasn't all just yellow and green. So uh, that's why I. These are some resin pieces from Freckled Fawn from a Freckled Fawn embellishment kit. The hearts and the plus signs. That I th believe they came in two different Freckled Fawn kits. And then also these tiny, tiny little flare badges are also from a Freckled Fawn embellishment kit. And oh, that was a frame that came in a Freckled Fawn embellishment kit, but I'm not going to use it. I thought it might hold some journaling, but it's too oval. I don't want to put an oval on a circle layout. And then uh, that's that big giant pink button is not going to stay there but these black buttons are from uh, Maggie Holmes collection I think it's from one of the more recent Maggie Holmes collections and they're like little typewriter keys and they're really cute and they add some contrast to each of my clusters so I'm going to put one in each and there were conveniently three of them so I'm positioning these so that there is something extending out beyond the circle onto the background paper beyond in each cluster so you see there's a heart in one cluster a plus in another cluster and then up in the top there's another uh, resin heart and I'm also extending something onto the circle uh, in each of those clusters too so on so yeah there's a plus sign that goes out onto the photo and then there's that outline of a heart that's orange that's right below that frame and then there's a plus sign up in the top one as well that kind of extends onto one of the lemons on the pattern paper so I'm I'm just repeating that idea I don't want it to only happen if I extend it outside of the circle in one place I want to do it in all three places and if I extend it inside of the circle in one place I want to do it in all three places just so that these clusters look consistent and not too too random I want them to look random but not too random and then those little square buttons are from Dear Lizzie from oh I don't know which collection but one of the older Dear Lizzie collections I just bought the buttons and I've never used them they're so cute and I've never they're one of those things that I hoard so I, I thought I'd get those striped those green and white striped buttons on this layout and I just grabbed a couple of other little embellishments from my from my stash mostly and now I'm taking a picture because I really like how this looks so far that gold frame it's actually I think it's like a bronze colored frame that is a really beautiful uh, frame and I have no idea where it came from no clue if somebody out there sent that to me thank you so so much because I absolutely love it it's perfect for this layout it's the perfect size I love how it connects the photo to that larger cluster of embellishments that includes the peacock feather oh I just love it it came in a set of three and I really have no clue who makes it or how I got it but it was in my stash and I'm so happy to be using it <laughs> I hate when I forget when people give me things I suspect somebody gave it to me it's not that I'm not grateful it's just that time goes by and I, I just forget 
Uh, so I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive. This is actually today. So all of these things happened a couple of days ago, but uh, now we're at today. I finished this one off just this morning. So I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive to uh, adhere all of these goodies down to my page. And with some of these little resin pieces, they're a little bit sunken in. And if that's the case, you have to make sure that some of the glue gets on the outside borders of the resin piece, or else you're just putting glue onto a surface that's never going to touch the paper. You know what I mean? Like if it's sunken in and on the back, and then you put the glue into the sunken in part, like into the little hollow, on the back, then it's not going to touch anything. So it's just going to glue and you're just going to have dry glue on the back of your embellishment. So just make sure if any of your resin pieces are sunken in that you put a tiny edge of glue around the outside of the shape. You'll see later on that I didn't do that on all of them and some of them fell off at the end and I had to re-glue them. So you'll see that process. So now I did take a picture before I took all of this apart because I really liked how the embellishments were and I didn't want to have to think it all over again. See how that, that flower has a little sunken in part on it? I made sure that some of the glue went onto the edges of that. And that's where using Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive is better than using Glossy Accents because Glossy Accents would dry shiny and if a little bit oozed out on the edges of where you put the glue on the edges, uh, it would show as a, as a shiny, gluey looking surface. Whereas Tombow Mono Multi will just, will just blend in with the paper or with the resin. And you see, I keep my glue bottle upside down while I'm not using it so that it doesn't, I don't want any air bubbles and I don't want to have to kind of always shake the glue back down into the bottle, into the bottom of the bottle every single time I pick it up. So I will often use a roll of washi tape to hold my glue upright while, or not upright, but upside down while I'm using it. But in this case, I just grabbed my little uh, tray, my little pinched tray that I use to keep my embellishments in and I can lean it up against the edge and it keeps it upside down for me. So I'm, I'm making these embellishments so that they're kind of clustered within the cluster too so that some of them are touching each other and then there are little gaps every here and there. I like the gaps because you can see the interest of the sewing and the different layers of paper and vellum underneath so I wanted a few gaps to show and of course there's that resin heart that falls outside of the circle and just you only need a tiny tiny bit of this glue because it does dry very very strong and then these are stickers so I just have to pick them up and peel the backing off of them and put it down again and then that button it has adhesive backing on it that's that dear Lizzie button the square one and so I just needed to kind of press it down and make sure that it was still stuck there's that typewriter key from Maggie Holmes oh my gosh I wish I had a ton of typewriter keys Somebody should sell typewriter keys. That would be an awesome embellishment to put on your layouts. I mean, yeah, Maggie Holmes sells them. So, but but the <laughs> I just realized that that didn't make a whole lot of sense. What I meant is is it would be cool to buy like a whole package that's all the typewriter keys from an old typewriter that nobody could fix or something. Um, because Maggie Holmes has them in one of her ephemera kits, but there's only like three of them or four of them in the whole set. And I'd love to have a whole bunch of them. So there we go. I have now glued down all of the embellishments. I have to add glue to the back of that little doily. And that just adds a little bit of interest towards the photos. And now I'm going to make my journaling piece. I just went back to the pictures I took the other day so that I could remember where I put it. And I could, I didn't know if I was going to use plain vellum or this patterned vellum, but because I had patterned vellum elsewhere on the layout, I thought I would go with the same vellum just, uh, just to be consistent and also to kind of enjoy that vellum by, by showing a, an even bigger piece of it. So again, I have my Creative Memories uh, trimmer out and I'm just trimming it down the way that I had marked it with pencil. And now I'm going to use my ATG, run a bit of it across the bottom. And I, I'm only gluing it to the bottom because it's not going to go anywhere. 
And now I'm actually going to just uh, glue the ampersand on right away so that I know where to put my journaling. Uh, yeah, because, because I want to save space for the ampersand and I don't want it to cover any essential journaling. So I'm going to decorate this journaling piece fully before I do the journaling on it so that I know where to put my words. So that ampersand is from the Amy Tangerine sticker pack. I think it's from her original collection, which I believe was just called Amy Tan or Amy Tangerine. I'm spelling out the word spring with those letters. And that just brings, because those letters are elsewhere on the layout, it just brings them down here and gives a little bit of that black contrast to the journaling and draws your eye towards it. I have a tiny bit of post-it note tape that I'm using to mask off most of my roller date stamp and I had to move it to 2015 and you know what I forgot to move it back. Whenever I change the year on my roller date stamp I always try to remember to roll it back right then and there. If I don't the next time I use my roller date stamp I won't look at the year and I will stamp 2015 on the next thing that I do. So as soon as I'm finished narrating this, I'm going to run over to my scrap desk and change that date <laughs> if I remember. So here are the close-ups and I am going to add something after this, but uh, this is the close-ups and there are some photos at the end. The photos will show this layout and they'll also show some close-ups of the original layout that this one was based on. I love how energetic these colors are and I love... I love how they work with the blown out photo here with the, the, the white paint on my deck is just kind of overexposed and it just makes those photos look so airy and bright and cheerful and the, the layout does a good job of mimicking those. So now you'll notice that there are there's black lines on two of the uh of the clusters but the black lines on this side got covered up by the by the embellishment so i just added two little lines that look like they come out from under and that just uh balances it out so that those other two black stray lines didn't look like they were there by accident or anything so here are the close-ups. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this process and I hope that you guys enjoy scrap lifting your own self. Whether you just started scrapbooking, then just grab one of your very, very, very first layouts. And if you've been scrapbooking for a couple of years, pull out some of your old uh, albums and pick a layout and scrap lift yourself and enter it over on our Facebook group in our National Scrapbooking Day Challenge. So take care and have a really great scrappy day.